Good day, gamers. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 5 of Playing With Flowers. I mean, the Regrowth mod pack. We have been doing exactly that. A lot of Playing With Flowers. The, uh... Nature Seeds and Skeleton Soul Seeds. Ooh, the Skeleton Soul Seeds branched. Yes! The Nature Seeds, on the other hand, have been sitting there stubbornly refusing to branch out. I did manage to get the Blue Orchid Seed from breeding my Poppy and my Dandelion together. And now we're going to combine the blue orchid with uh, the blue orchid, sorry, with both the dandelion and the poppy seeds so that we can get even more crossbreeds. Because if I use that blue orchid flower uh, with the poppy seeds, I will get allium seeds and with the dandelion seeds, I will get daisy seeds. Both of which are going to lead me to newer, better things. You might have seen a flash of a different seed type in there. Yeah, that's part of what we're going for here. And since I now, well, I, at least I'm expanding towards a renewable source of bone meal, I'm going to start speeding up my growth of these. As well, uh, you know what? Part of me is tempted to do a blue or orchid field, but I don't think that that's going to be very useful in the long term. All right, let's get back to questing. So we went out, we found everything we needed for clay for days. We've got our 12 clay, but we actually need 10 mystical light gray flowers, not just one. And I don't know if I have that many. Let me check for gray. We do. We actually had 13 mystical light gray flowers, and we have another almost two full stacks of floral fertilizer. So we could have easily gotten more if we wanted to. We are going to create the Clay Conia Manual Spit Claim Reward. Now this doesn't open up any more quests, but it does give us the Clay Conia Flower, and I'm going to want to look this guy up in the Lexica Botanica. So I'm going to bring him way over here, set him down on some dirt, and we will shift right click. Clay Conia is a simple flower. All it does is moisten nearby sand, turning it into clay. This process uses a decent amount of mana, but nothing too insane. So if I want to actually make use of a flower like this, it needs to be near a source of mana. And of course, that's part of why the mana pool exists, to be a repository for mana. So if I were to do a bit of digging here, and I were to put down some sand and some dirt near there, I wonder if it'll work with the red sand. Let's find out. Some dirt, some sand, the clay conia. Yep. That turned it into clay very quickly at that. 12, 11, 12. Okay, so it will turn each bit of sand into a single bit of clay. And it does so fast, but it does suck up the mana from the mana pool as it does this. So you need to be a little careful with just how much you're willing to spend on making clay. As such, I'm going to keep it back a bit. I'm going to hang on to it, keep it in my chest for when I decide, oh, I need a whole ton of clay. Fortunately, it's a little hard to see against that chest background, but nothing you can do about that. Uh, so, next thing I believe that we shall work on, well, we're gonna check our flowers. Dandelion seeds. No, those are not allowed. Oh, I'm out of crops. That's all right, easy fix. And I have a new stack of crops. Fantastic. Right-click the results, by the way, to do that. Uh, poppy seeds? Nope, those are not allowed either. We will eventually get the crossbreeds that we're looking for. They're just not a 100% guarantee, and as you go up the line, they actually get more and more rare. Now, I'm harvesting the dust, basically, when it's fully grown and has nothing to branch out onto. So, I've actually managed to accumulate a good bit of essence dust over time. We're almost at, uh, well, we're just past half a stack. I have no idea why I've put potatoes in there. So, at the moment, there's a lot of fiddly work to be done around the farms, but I don't mind so much because I'm still having a lot of fun with it, which, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe there's something, like, significantly wrong with me that I enjoy this quite as much as I do, but I'm having a really good time. Playing with these mechanics, huh? You know what? I bet I could build a better breeding station for these than I currently have. But right now I'm just collecting the seeds as opposed to worrying about all of that. 
Let's see what's next on the quest list. So, what the world came to be is really waiting on that magical fertilizer or me to go out and kill an enderman. I might make that attempt tonight, but I'd really rather have some armor before I do that. In what the world is made of, we could start working on the dye seeds. We only need to get one and we'll be guaranteed at least one more, maybe two more. I'm not too worried about it because it's so easy to grow more seeds. Dye seeds are fun because they rely on the runic altar. So what we're going to need to do if we want to make use of the runic altar is we're going to need to grab one of these flowers. I'll use the uh, one of these petals, the mystical white petal I'll use. Uh, seven more living wood. We need to make another mana spreader. Because we need to take the power from the mana pool and put it into the runic altar if we're going to make use of it. And because I want to keep things compact for the moment, I'm just going to do so like so. Uh, nope, I failed. Hang on. Let me pick these up. There we are. Put the mana spreader like that, put the runic altar like so, and... I can see that this is targeting the runic altar and the runic altar. Well, the mana spreader is full. The runic altar doesn't actually have a buffer of its own. It won't actually fill up until I start crafting things in it. Now, to make the dye seeds, I very specifically need two weak essence and some essence seeds. So let me go get those. Bam. There's my essence seeds. Here's my two weak essence. I'm also going to need white, yellow, gray, blue, brown, uh, green, red, and black dye. Or I can use the floral powders of the same type. The dye seeds are going to provide me with the various colors of dye. So I need to start with all of the, well, most of the base colors. Luckily, the black, white, and gray can be subbed in with my ink sacs and bone meal, and then I can create the other gray like so. There's some gray dye. All right, so let's actually get these in order. White, yellow, gray. White, yellow, gray. We're going to do so in our hot bar so that we can easily put this whole thing together. White, yellow, gray, blue, brown, green. Blue, brown, green. This is a very complicated recipe. Huh, brown might be an issue. I'm going to have to use the floral powder for that, I think. Yeah, let's use what... Oh, I guess I could go grab a bunch of the cucumber coral from down in the world and make, make it that way, but... Eh, that's too much work for me. Um... Let's see. Red, we have black. Wait. Blue, brown, green. Blue, brown, green. Red. Where'd my red go? There's my red. My black. And that's it. Okay. So, we are in need still of the yellow. I have the yellow. Wait. White, yellow, gray. Derp. I'm leaving a space where I don't need one. Then it's the blue, brown, brown green, red. Blue, brown, green, red, black. That's a little better. Blue, brown, green. Okay. Well, I could work to get some... Ooh, we're done with the essence seed. Excellent. I could work to get some cactus. In fact, the nature seeds will help with that immensely after a time. I could... Uh, I think that I'm just going to use the mystical flowers, honestly. They're going to be the easiest source of it because... Well, hang on here. Daisy. Good. I've got my daisy seeds. Let's harvest this guy to get the blue. That'll work. Throw that. And... Then we just need the brown and the green. Yeah. Those we will use flowers for. Green and brown. Green. Or, yeah. Brown and green. Blue, brown, green. Excellent. I don't know why this was so complicated. Probably because I'm just not used to thinking in color. It's one of those uh, things you you get used to. You do everything a certain way because, you know, that's how it's done in your brain. Yeah. All right. So, I don't think that the order you toss them into the runic altar matters. But what you do is you literally throw it on there and you see that it starts floating around. And you do that with all of these as well as the two weak essence. 
There we go. Now that we've got the full recipe together, all we need to do is give it a whack with our wand of the forest. Maybe? Hang on. I'm doing something wrong here. I have forgotten an essential step. Runic creation is a rather important complex in the advancement of the botanical magics. First and foremost, though, this type of crafting requires a decent knowledge of mana manipulation. Before proceeding further, read through the important entries. Okay. Uh, to make runes, fun stuff, to utilize it, place it, the components to the rune you want to create. Proceed by linking a mana spreader to the altar and right-click it with a wand of the forest. Okay. So I likely need to have this in binding mode and shift right click, then shift right click it. Okay, that kind of worked. Now if I put this back in function mode and I right click, what am I missing? Two weak essence, essence seeds. All right, I can see essence seeds, two weak essence, and then white, yellow, gray. Hang on a second. Let me make sure. Bone meal works. Dandelion yellow works. Gray dye from Minecraft. Blue dye. Blue dye. Floral blue powder. Blue dye. Oh, the blue from... The blue that I used actually does not work. So I will, in fact, need to use floral powder. Everything else that I used does work, but the blue does not. Now, if I shift right click, I can grab out the item with an empty hand. I can grab out the items in the order that I put them in. So, let's keep going. There's the... Oh, because that gave me light blue dye, not blue dye. That's the problem. I'm sure that there are some of you that have been sitting there screaming at the screen ever since I decided to do that. I apologize for my failure. Penance will be paid. Here we go. Let's, uh... Grab you, put you away. Make... Some blue floral powder. This time, it should all work. Ah! Alrighty. Bam, 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 bam. You can either throw it on there. You can only throw it on there if you can actually aim and it hits the top, or you can just right-click it on there. Alright. Now! Now we should be able to use our Wand of the Forest. Bam! Yep, there we are. Really cool particle effects, really cool noise, and if you mouse over it with the wand, you get a status progress. Zorch, zorch, zorch. Ah, uh, Do I wait now or do I need to whack it again? I don't remember. Oh, when the happens, drop a piece of living rock on top of it and use the wand on it again to collect your rune. Um. Huh. I don't know if that's what I need to do. Do I need to toss a piece of living rock on top of it? Do I need to piece it and toss a seed on top of it? This is a little bit odd. Well, let me try the living rock, for one. Which is going to be in here, and if that doesn't work, we'll try a seed. Okay, that's strange. It does use up the living rock. <laughs> anyway, die seeds complete. And we will, of course, do our standard of growing a field full of them because I do like having dye seeds because they make for the pretties. And also, the essence of dye can be used... Um, actually, no, it can't. Uh, it is necessary for making the regular infusion stone, however, so it's not exactly useless no matter how you spin it. But you probably don't need to do a full field of them. I'm going to because I'm kind of on a bit of a self-imposed quest to get super plants of every variety. Alright now, let's see what we get for completing die seeds. Well, I'm going to take the weak essence because I don't really care about the extras. Really, I mean, the, I don't think the extras serve a ton of purpose in this case because these are just going to grow and end up spreading across the field, you know? Aha! My nature plants finally spread. Yes, yes. Good, good. Whoops, didn't mean to stomp that. Next on the list, ooh. Actually, I need to do a little bit more work around other quest lines before I can really unlock this area. And let's try out the way the world works. Yes, this is going to want me to start making the various runes to make the runes 
I'm going to need to get a little bit more advanced before I can really do this because like the rune of water that this wants me to make requires mana steel and to make mana steel well I'm gonna need iron so we'll come back to that <laughs> we haven't figured out how to extract minerals yet uh, what the world teaches unfortunately uh, well actually no I might have enough cotton by this point in time yeah cotton farms doing pretty well We'll, we'll just harvest what I have there because that'll give me enough to actually make the book holster thingy. And actually, I'm going to take a moment off camera and I'm going to gather up all of the essence plants and get a new strain going with the best one, as well as fill this up with all of the rejects. So I'll be back in a little bit, folks. All right, the best of the lot was a growth five gain four crop uh, essence seed. And there's a smattering of others that get as good as growth 4, gain 3, but nothing that compares with this. Ooh, look, my die seeds have fully grown, and they're beautiful. Uh, nature, no, not really progressing. Yeah, that's okay. That's why we're off to work on other things. We're finally going to make the bookbinder that we were planning on to string and to paper. Like so. And that will allow us to work on another quest, or probably claim the rewards of what the world teaches. Bound in print. Crafting task complete. 16 books and 16 experience drops. Ooh, gives 40 experience. Those are pretty awesome. Can be made with essence of experience. Which experience seeds are relatively difficult to complete and create. And those are going to take a while. Yeah, those are going to take a long while, actually. Okay. Moving on, let's take a look at um, the experience drops, what I can use them for. Well, they can turn into molten experience. Uh, they seem to be a key component of the various animal creating quests. As such, we're definitely not going to be using them up, especially considering if I take a look at my quest book, I have opened up the life of the world. What came first? Well, it wants me to make 16 eggs. Feathers can be a very useful resource, and eggs might be just the basis you need to bring back other forms of life. Next stop, chickens. And this is Life is Mysterious, but one thing's for sure, you're going to need to bring back, bring more life back into the world if nature is to recover. So let's see if we can make a chicken spawn egg. Spawn chicken? No. Can we just make a regular egg? Yes, we can. Oh, but we need runic stuff before we can do that. We're also going to need a regular use of a uh, regular source of pasture seeds, which will be much more. Basically, all of this is reliant on iron and we're going to need mandrake seeds if we want to mass produce eggs. Uh, I think it might be time to set up. Oh, man. Mandrake seeds. Really? Oh, I hate those things. That's all right. I guess we won't be creating life this episode, but it will definitely be coming in the future. I am doing some of this kind of blind at this point. I did a little research on the pack and decided I really like the look of things. But uh, for now, things are going to go through a bit of a, a bit at a time. Ooh, how the world changes. Witchcraft may well be the salvation you seek for the world. It wants me to create a... Oh, my first step, reputation task. I had to get Arcanist up to 20. That's right. There are various quests in this book that give you reputation. And I guess mine is currently at 26 for Arcanist, 14 for Mechanist, and 13 for Geneticist. And as you do more quests and raise those reputations, you will unlock new things. I thought that was pretty cool. So, let's see. Ooh, Cartography Basics. I like the sound of that. You're getting sick of getting lost. Yes. Yes, I am. Which looks, in this terrain, which looks very much the same no matter which way you turn. Picking up the trade of cartography might be a wise move. It would also let me tear down the giant cobblestone phallus. So, you can use maps to survey the area, and when placed flat on a surface such as a frame, you can use a drafting compass to work points of interest on them too. Pity these marks fade rapidly as the map folds. Well, that's annoying, but empty map, drafting compass, and oak map frame. Let's take a look at what those require. An empty map is fairly simple. It just requires some ink or, or black dye of any sort and a bunch of paper. Good thing I've been working on my sugarcane. Speaking of which, it's finally done. You know what? I think that this is a pretty good sugarcane farm even without harvesting because I can tear down most of it and get more than half a stack of sugarcane already. 
I'm happy about that. Ooh, yes, yes. These two have grown, which means I can start harvesting this every time it's ready. Very happy about that, too. All right, I need black dye. So, well, first I want to turn all of this into paper. And we can put the rest of it, the, the one le that was left over, away. And secondly, we're going to go grab an ink sack for this, because that's what I've decided to use. Good reason, right? There we are. Now, the compass. There we are. Drafting compass is flint tool rods, flint, and sticks. Okay. Can I make the flint tool rods in my crafting... Sh in? Uh, no. No, I cannot make it in the crafting interface. I will have to create a tool rod pattern and use it in my part builder to make two flint tool rods. One, two. There we are. It's also going to use a flint and, what, two wooden tool rods? Nope, two sticks. Good. That makes life slightly easier. So I can just R that, shift left click, and boom, I have a drafting compass. Fantastic. Last step, oak map frame. It needs oak specifically. That's going to use an oak slab surrounded by sticks. That is simple enough. Uh, I'm going to need to do so much more farming wood at this rate. Just give me all of the sticks. I need them. There we are. Quest complete, maybe? Yes. Quest complete. Gives me four more empty maps and a book. Claim reward. Fantastic. Let's see what we can do with this. Now, in Minecraft, these are basic vanilla Minecraft maps. If I right-click this, it will become a map that is now um, bound to this set of chunks. And actually, interestingly, I've got my base at the edge of a map area. Now, I can use this map to make a... Uh, to create a different empty map once again by using eight paper so I can always re I, I never have to refarm the squid as it were if I want to I believe that there's a way to zoom out the map but I don't remember exactly how that works let me go look up vanilla map mechanics because I've been using mini maps for so long that I've completely forgotten how they work back in a bit okay that's what I was doing long it doesn't actually reset the map this is the recipe to zoom the map out there we are and I like them zoomed out just the once. If I take a look, now I can see my whole little area on the map. And I can get a good idea of the countryside around me. And I can zoom this out, I believe, up to four times. When it is in its unzoomed state, a map, one pixel on the map is one block in the world. When you zoom it once, it goes to half of that. So one pixel on the map is two blocks in the world. You can zoom it a number, another time to go half of that meaning that one pixel is four by four blocks or and you can get that all the way up to one pixel equals one chunk or 16 by 16 blocks now with the map frame i believe i can put that on the wall and stick the map in there and i can easily see the discovered area of the map and i should then be able to use the drafting compass to set a waypoint simply by pointing at it and then doing you are the uh, base camp, except now if I take a look at this, grab it out of, oh, you can shift right click to rotate it, by the way, if I grab it out of the mapping, hmm, there's a way to get it out without, there's no way to get it out without breaking it down. So if I break the mapping, uh, the mapping frame, and then I take a look, I can see me on there, but I can't really see any waypoints. Here, let me use a different color of waypoint so it's a little bit more obvious. There we go. Uh, no, that won't work. Can I get it like a bright yellow? No, there are no really bright colors available. That's a shame. But I can use a whitish or pinkish. Pink -ish. So there's my base camp, and then I hit accept. And you can see that I have set a easy, easy to see marker up there. It's kind of like a push pin. And I can right click it to get the coordinates. I don't know if it's possible to get rid of that. Maybe if I shift right click. Remove. There we go. Yep, you can shift right click the base camp to get rid of it. And they do look uh, actually render slightly out from the map, which I think is really cool. Actually, you don't even need to shift right... Uh, yes, you do. You need to shift right click. Otherwise, you're trying to place another waypoint. And... Huh. It's not allowing me to do the whole... 
Well, here. If I do that, then I right-click you. Now it's telling me Waypoint 2 is there. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's what you can do with the map frame. It's kind of neat. Uh, just having a map at all, though, to carry around with you is very useful, especially if you make your base wide enough that it'll show up easily on a map. This is my first time playing with the uh, Bibliocraft mapping stuff, so I am going to keep the... You know, the map really doesn't show a whole lot, <laughs> honestly. So I'm not sure I'm even going to hang on to it for the moment, but I'll probably end up building something cool with the mapping stuff later on. It's just going to have to wait until I have more resources to work with, I think. That'll be for the best. All right, what's next? We could make the world at your fingertips. The scope of a map for recording your surveying of the world doesn't cut it. Well, no kidding. You think you might be able to collate multiple maps in a single tome, the Atlas. By carrying around a drafting compass in it, too, you should be able to mark locations of interest on the fly as well. That's nice. Let's see about that Atlas. That would be a lot better. The Bibliocraft ma Atlas. Ooh, I... Hmm. I need some interesting options here. I need a slotted book using a spruce wood label. Or I'm going to need multiple enchanted books, waypoint compasses, and ender pearls. Yeah, the, uh, that'll make the Atlas Eternal Compass one. That's kind of neat. So yeah, let's make that slotted book. Um, some paper, some drafting compass, and an empty map. Okay. Well, how do I make the slot? How is it? It's a label. And that's just made with six of the oak wood slabs. All right. Grab my drafting compass, my paper, and my empty maps. And one book. Here we go. Let's try this out. See what we get out of this and if we like it. There we are. Slotted book. I have no idea what this does. Let's see what happens if I put you in there. I, I can literally hide a item inside it. That's amazing. I can hide items on my bookcase. I kind of really like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's silly. All right, where was I? I was turning this into something useful, more useful. That would actually be a heck of a way to, well, I mean, I unless you're on a really hardcore rating server, that'd be a heck of, oh, it uses my compass instead of giving it back. That makes me sad. Huh, zoom level. Oh, I now need to put my map in here. I understand. Maybe. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Whee! No? Okay. Waypoints. All right, I can create waypoints. That's something. Okay, I'm going to explore the uh, mechanics of the Atlas on my own time. For now, let's just hand in the quest. There we go. We get 16 more experience drops and four empty maps. Do I put empty maps in? I can turn auto center and auto create on. I put you here? No, you go here. Yep. Like I said, I'll have to play with this on my own time. Next on the list, uh, that was all for cartography. On herbology. Ah, it wants me to start making the... Ooh, this will give me extra nature essence. Tandis seems to produce many different plants. Maybe there's a tome which can tell you about them. Yes, that is awesome. I wish I would taken a look at that ages ago. Making the herbology book is very simple. It just uses a poppy and a dandelion which I believe I have over here. Wow, these are doing well. Yes, yes, give me, give me all the delicious essence. There we are. Uh, some of these, I gotta do something with those flowers. Never enough time, and there's a poppy, there's a dandelion. What else do I need for that? Book, I'm gonna need a book, I'm gonna need a stick, and I'm gonna need some dye. Not a problem. Let's get going. Could not be happier with the line of books that you can make and get all kinds of fantastic wonderfulness out of. So that was book die. Oh, I can uncraft my books into paper. That's nice. Poppy and dandelion for the herbology book. And that's it. You're done. 16 more experience drops. You get your book back and you get 16 nature essence. Fantastic. 
So that's going to allow me to finally finish the What the World Came to Be quest of Bro, damn it. I need to make some magic fertilizer. Magic fertilizer. Well, actually, it's almost enough. I don't have any mutandus at this time, and that is required. So I am going to, instead of going straight into making mutandus, we're going to need to grow some of those fantastic little plants that I hate so much. <sighs> All right. Where are my mandrake seeds? I have two of them. And I guess this is now going to be the mandrake plot. I'm going to have to set up a better system than this in the long run. For now, let's just get these grown. And hope that they don't. Ah, no. Here we go. Luckily, they don't hurt you. They just... They make you wish that you could die slightly. Ah, oh, man. They just hate them so much. There. Uh, unfortunately, I need at least one more. Let's get some more crops made. On the plus side, they do self-propagate. No, not another one. Stop it, you terrible little beast, you. Here, maybe... Oh, the nausea effect. Come over here. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> I hate you. Wow, really? It keeps running through my field. There we go. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. That really bothers me. It really, like, actually gives me motion sickness. It's not good. Alright, uh, I need some charcoal. I need some bone meal, some wood ash, and the mandrake. And then we have our mutandus. Bump, 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 bump. And up. I did it wrong. How did I do it wrong? Mutandus. Oh, no, no, no. I need, I don't need that. I need, um, green. I should probably get some more dyes going. But that's why I'm working on breeding flowers over there. Where is my green? There we go. One of you. And you. You, you, you. Now, let's just... There. Alright. So, I'm going to be using Butandus. Floral powder. Floral fertilizer, that is. And bone meal. With two nature essence each to make the magical fertilizer. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a whole bunch of this because this is going to help me in the long run. Magical fertilizer will grow essence plants that bone meal can't touch. For example, if I were to attempt to apply bone meal to this crop, nothing happens. If I attempt to apply a magical fertilizer to this crop, it goes just like bone meal from 0 to 57. Fantastic, huh? This means I will be able to easily produce lots of whatever new thing I'm attempting to get my hands on. And, because I can create bone meal from the essence of the skeleton, and I can use the bone meal to create floral fertilizer... Hang on. ...with enough of the powder, or with rose red and dandelion yellow, which is part of why I'm so interested in making sure that these guys are successful. In fact, let me uh, demonstrate here. It is very easy to create the floral fertilizer, like so. There you go. And then we can make our mutandus, again, we using nothing more than things that we grow. We're in good shape. I can create an infinite amount of magical fertilizer if I'm willing to put the time in. It's putting in the time that's going to be the painful part, you know? Yeah, well, no, we'll leave them all in there for now. So... Rewards. 24 Magical Fertilizer, and I'm going to take the 24 Mutandus because that's the hardest one of the bunch to take. And will allow me to make another 72 Magical Fertilizer when I have the uh, enough of the Nature Essence to do so. Let's see. Uh, that We might be almost done with the world that came to be. I need to finish off Ender uh, Enderference, and then we can move on. Uh, let's see if that unlocked it. Does that unlock anything? You can mouse over a quest to find out if it unlocks anything. Unfortunately, it does not.
Also, unfortunately, I've already managed to go through the entire episode's worth of time by faffing about with this, uh, all of these plants. I'm going to do a bunch of farming and stuff between episodes, and you will find a world download for episode 5 below, so you can continue playing along in case I have gotten ahead of you. Feel free to use that to catch back up. Next time, more quests, more playing with flowers, more growing things, but hopefully I'll have some cool ideas to show you by then. I've got... I, I want to actually get to using up this lava, and to do that, I really need to get metal production. So that's my next big goal, is metals. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you have and you would like to see me continue showing up in your subscriber feed, please leave a like and comment on the video telling me what you liked about it. If you've not enjoyed it but hope to see the next video improve, then please leave a dislike and tell me what I can do better. And I'll see you next time.